Okay. Huh? I've decided to buy a colony of bees and as such I need to get some more boxes and frames and whatnot put together. Again from a woodworking perspective um, you don't really want to see that. Anytime you have a screw driven that deeply in there what you're going to basically just be doing is inviting a place for water to start collecting that's going to rot it out a lot easier. You can see when they assemble these they actually use screws on this side here and nails on this side and, and from a woodworking point of view that's actually completely unnecessary because these are dovetail joints. There's no physical way that the joints on this side, which are called the pins, are going to be able to pull through the dovetail because of the wedge shape of the dovetail. You know, that's really the beauty of this dovetail type of joint. Uh, I went with the Resilience line of paints uh, specifically because it's very low VOC. It's almost zero VOC. You also may recognize this color, which is kind of exciting. If you know tractors, this is actually John Deere Green. Or Well, good evening guys. We still have more to do. Right, Finn? We're gonna be getting our bees in a couple days and I still have to build a stand for them, so that's gonna be on tonight's shortlist. This is the spot that we're gonna be in. It seems a little bit in the way in terms of the garden goes, but uh, that's a compromise I'm willing to make because it's gonna give the bees the best sun. It's gonna be a relatively dry area. It's not going to put them right up against the fence where a curious bear or raccoons or skunks are going to be able to get it. Maybe, maybe not skunks so much, but uh, we have enough critters that can sort of work around a fence a bit that it would be nice to just give them a little bit of extra buffer room. And so right now being June, our sun will follow and track something like this. But in two more months, our sun's going to come and track like this. If we were to move just 10 or 15 feet forward, we would be losing out on half of the day's worth of sun. Um, at this point here, we'll be fine. Uh, by the time winter starts to set in, the leaves are going to be gone from these trees over here. These are all deciduous birch, and uh, then there will be winter sun coming in. Uh, you know, in the in the dead of the winter, our sun comes up, something kind of like that. So trying to keep sun in mind here is, is definitely, um, it's kind of one of those things that's always in the back of your mind. And what I've been learning about bees is that it's something that you have to keep in the forefront of your mind when you're, you're planning your site to your locations and whatnot for them. So anyways, we better get at her because still lots to do. <laughs> <laughs> when is there not lots to do, eh? Coffee. Nothing else matters if it's not hot coffee. I'm going to have probably, maybe not a full 10 feet, maybe more like 8 feet or so. But I want to have a certain amount of bench space here so I have room to set down or move some of the boxes if I'm inspecting hives. I also want to have room where I can add two more hives. I can envision myself adding a couple more colonies at least in the not so distant future. So may as well make some space now, right? I don't want to run out of space right off the bat.
watch out. Good boy, good watch out. You've probably seen me have a treat pouch all the time. That's for training. We train all day. Not constantly, but whenever there's a good op opportunity. Okay, Finn, watch out. Good. Good job. Okay, that should be good. Pretty side out, why not? Well, that's why we're really we're slowing down, we're getting into the clay now. It's probably about three feet down. Frost isn't that deep here. Frost doesn't go more than a foot deep usually here. It's not that we don't get cold, but we don't get sustained cold. We might get cold for three weeks, max. So post going to three feet, frost is not going to touch them. That's what you use one of these for, right? I don't know what's got the big handle on the end here for, but it seems to work okay. Okay. So here's what I'm thinking. I want the handles of my bottom box to not really be too much lower than this. Which probably means I want my base around here. Maybe knee, knee height. I have no idea. I'm just spitballing what I think might be the best way to go. But uh, looking at uh, Barnyard Bees online there, all of his seem to be even maybe down here a little bit. And uh, I definitely don't want something up here where I'm trying to lift big supers up here. I think that would be maybe a problem. One of the joys of peat is stuff doesn't necessarily decompose. I have no idea how old this is, but there's no record in our local trees of there being a forest fire in the area. And there is char on, on this. Uh, it's a piece of old cedar log. So we're probably more than 300 years old. And uh, when we were ripping uh, this, when we, when we were doing some key line plowing, um, you know, we turn stuff like this up. So, interesting. Uh, interesting how the peat uh, preserves some things. I want a small slant forwards. Okay. Good. 
probably going to have half an inch over the length of the hive. But I can easily shave these as needed with an axe. I'm going to come back and dress them a little bit. Probably with a draw knife, dress them so it's a little bit. We just knock these knots and humps off. Alright, well, the bulk of the work's done. Tomorrow we'll do the fine tuning. It's about 10 o'clock. I'm getting tired. Alright, guys, we'll pick up here where we're going to leave off. We'll pick up tomorrow and get this thing finished off. Wait till you see what. All right guys, we just got home. I got my first hive and it's bee time.
There's a reason why this got left tall. So I've got this one gallon two frame feeder full to about here, so two thirds or so, with one to one. There's uh, two frames of stores, one of which also has extra brood on it, and three frames of bees and brood to go in. Did I ever tell you that I used to be like deadly afraid of bees and wasps and anything that pretty well flew and stung? I don't know if you ever get do get fully over like a phobia like that, but but I've been working pretty hard on it for the past 10 years or so. And uh, 10 years ago, sort of uh, the thought of bringing home a box that has 4,000 bees in it would be just crazy. I couldn't even imagine it. And yeah, here we are. So it goes to show you that people can change. Don't expect things to happen overnight, but you can you can make some some pretty big changes in your life. I kind of have this feeling that just ripping the tapes off is going to be something that the bees really won't like the feeling of or the sound of so I'm just going to just cut it Definitely checking me out, but they seem to be just much more curious than anything else. I gotta say, it's not as overwhelming as I thought it might be. I was a little bit unsure how things were gonna feel. Partly, I think, because I've watched a lot and a lot of videos of beekeepers who have been doing it for decades. Part of it I think is just the, uh, for me was just getting used to the sound. I gotta say, I'm really glad I have gloves right now because I would be very distracted by the feeling of bees climbing or crawling all over my hands. This is an incredibly heavy frame. I really didn't understand how much honey weighs. Oh, I see the queen. So I thought it was a fall queen, but it actually is this year's queen. She's been in here for a little over a month. So I guess she went in around the beginning of May.
there she is. Just making sure that I could see her well. frame of stores. I think they might be starting to tell me that I've been in here long enough. All right guys, well, thanks for joining me on this one. A little bit of a different type of getting dirty today. Like I said earlier, I am completely brand spanking new at this. Uh, so, please, if you are learning yourself, do not use this video as a reference video. Um, but, um, you know, overall, I think it was a success. The queen's still alive in the box. So, as always, Get out there, learn something new, get a little dirty while you're doing it, even if it's a little sticky. And uh, sticky is a type of dirt. Just go have some fun out there, man, because there is so much cool stuff to do. And uh, life's too short to spend it just sitting behind a computer screen all day. So you guys take care. We'll talk to you later.